Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 49, titled Angry Duke Nukem Fail. In the show, we're talking about Angry Birds, Duke Nukem, and your brain. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 49. Uh, we have a random this week, which we haven't had for quite a while. I'm not sure who actually brought this in. It's either Jan or Quinton, I think. Uh, which me, yeah. is, Jan. bullet trajectory cannot be parabolic. Um, and then I got it from Wikipedia. Yeah, there's a whole long discussion here, but I think this is going to take a bit long. Go check on Wikipedia why a bullet trajectory is not actually parabolic. And parabolic is important because 49 is a perfect square. And uh, the formula for a parabola, obviously, is x squared is the, the base term cool. you need to okay. make a parabola. Um, with us this week, we have uh, the usual, uh, Jan Vermeulen. Um, oh, let's actually pull this. Yeah. <laughs> I went through I haven't mixed in a while. I've been <laughs> spoiled with uh, uh, Jan, yeah. but unfortunately yeah. he's got his uh, old, uh, youngest son's birthday today, so he's away. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, we have uh, Quentin. Quentin. Mm. He's not that normal around, though. No, he's not that normal. <laughs> yeah. He's been in a couple of times. Yeah, and, so. of course, Stuart. Uh, Stuart? <laughs> Stuart, do? I have been a long week, sorry. <laughs> Myself, How's so. it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, no. All right. Um, let's get into the RSC stuff. We'll pace that through. Um, events happening this week. We have Tile Day today. I actually brought a Tile. Yep. I know you did. Where is it? Uh, it's outside. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. <laughs> and, and it's Africa Day. And our so, so I think from now on, like all, all Douglas Adams fans in South Africa need to have a Tile with... The yeah, African continent yeah, on there. Mm. I think we'll it's, I see. Is that it's, the bit that we're going to suck? That's where your, your nutrients <laughs> are stored. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, it's the part that the rest of the world is sucking. Let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 let's not talk about <laughs> politics. It has been decided. Um, some other things coming up. 4th of June is we have the uh, Twitter blanket drive. Um, it's basically it's got started, I think, last year or the year before. And it's basically to get blankets for the underprivileged. Pretty cool thing to go to. Hmm. Uh, and then, of course, this Friday is the 27 dinner. So get Gr- information at the usual spot, 27 yeah. dinner dot com. com. Yeah. Let's actually check that out. Do you know what the topic this year, oh, this year, this month is? Uh, open source. So it's Twitter, Facebook stuff. And open then, source. Know, Twitter, open source. Facebook stuff. Social. Social media. Social media. Oh, okay. It's always social media, though. Generally, but it's specifically talking about social media tonight. Okay. Um, and then they've also got something about CRM. Uh, oh, okay. I think it's about 150 rand a head. Not sponsored this time. All right. Um, but go check it out. It's certainly worth all, especially I, if you haven't been before. I know I saw, I saw some of the tweets from, from the organizer, and he said that what they've had is with some of the sponsored events, just by the way, just yeah. um, while we're talking about it, is that people... Um, uh, people are, are rowdy and rude and so the speakers you can't hear yeah. the speakers properly and so he said he's just not going to make it free ever again mm. um, eh. that was the last tweet I saw about it and I understand that you, you like as soon as you put a, a, a price on something then all of a sudden people go you know yeah. is this worthwhile I'm just going to go for free food exactly. hey it's coming back to that uh, sorry just on a similar topic but a little bit more random um, you know Boston Big Picture you must no. have seen them. Boston no. Big Picture, they've got a... Go check them out. It's the boston.com newspaper. Oh, the picture of the day. Yeah, but they've got like a whole series yes, of photographs, yeah. okay? Very high resolution, you know, like really prize-winning mm-hmm. photographs, some of them, really good. Of, you know, with all the hot spots uh, or, you know, they had the ones with the tornadoes and the Icelandic new volcano and all the rest. They've just replaced their comment system with Facebook's comment system. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why, stop the trolls. Money because webinars. people oh, yeah. people comment mm-hmm. have to comment with their Facebook profile. They have yeah. to log in with their Facebook profile and then comment with their Facebook profile. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. MoneyWeb has done exactly mm-hmm. the same thing, I think. But they don't uh, – I haven't actually uh, played with the MoneyWeb system that much yet. But I think what they do is they just have a registration thing. In order to register for their comment section, mm-hmm. you have to register with your Facebook account. No. And it pulls in your information. No, this actually uses Facebook comments. Well, we had it at the bottom of our yeah. Star account for Tiny World. I've just moved it because it just <coughs> – it, it's, it's, it's based more for comments. It's not really like a rolling thing. Yes, yeah. Um, and basically, mm. you can then you just type. It's on the bottom. You just type and your profile comes through. It's, and it, 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 and it's, it, well, the one reason is to stop the trolls. Minimize the trolling. Because then you can see if, because uh, basically those photos always end up in a fight about religion or Mac versus PC or America versus some other country or whatever it is. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or just America. 
Yeah. Either <laughs> way. About, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's interesting. So, yeah, you know, pay, have to pay for something and you, you'll get the people that really want to go. I'm not going to say, Ash and Reese, it's a bit expensive though this time. 50 but rand. It's, ah, not dude, it's not that bad, man. Cool. It's really not but that bad. But it is bad. worth it. It really is. But then what does the 150 rand get you? Uh, it gets you a main meal and. Oh, come dessert. on, dude. You'll pay that. F- if you go to a restaurant, you'll pay that for That's main meal anyway. That's probably right, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you would have paid that anyway to go out. But it's it's for for night out. If you d- haven't done it, it's definitely worthwhile. You you get it, to meet a lot of the guys that are quite involved in Twitter, um, and it's it's quite a social event. It's pretty cool. We've all been. Mm. Mm. Uh, I know the first time I met Jan was at a Twitter event. <laughs> so. And remember, if you want any other geek days or things geek related, check out stardates.co.za. www.stardates.co.za. Yes, and we also forgot to mention, also check out the, sh- the Let's Talk Sports show that was on last night. It's on, on YouTube and <laughs> everything else. There's a supposedly a, a, a <coughs> relatively oh, pretty, no. say this. <laughs> pretty lady on it. <laughs> uh, who demonstrates, what's it, the, the Playboy Bunny Bounce, I think it's called. Dip. The Playboy Bunny, bunny dip. dip. Okay, interesting. Now I have to see it because I want to know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> well done. I wouldn't, yeah, type, I, I wouldn't type that into YouTube with your volume on no, at the moment. Really <laughs> it's, it's, no, yeah. but if you wanted to go find out on the net what it was, I'd just yeah. watch out. Fair, Fair enough. enough. Um, All right. Thanks, for the, <laughs> thanks for the warning. First uh, topic for the show. Um, we have a South African in the Google Science semifinals. Yay. Uh, Stu, do you want to just give a big round on what, what this well, is? Well, we talked about this before. Basically, it was a worldwide science fair. Mm-hmm. For um, you could just anybody worldwide could could go. What it was the age limit? I think eighteen or something like that. I think uh, yeah, it was eight. It was like eighteen. That, yeah. You still had to be in high school, basically. And there's a South African in the semi-finals. So uh, Luke Taylor is a grade nine pupil from the German International School in Cape Town, and he is g- joining. Uh, I think they said sixty four other students to go to the states and compete. For this project, he did cool. a, a project was natural language processing for robot control. Yeah, wow. effectively yeah. took what the Mindstorm Lego set, uh, settings and, and he took uh, one of the specific robots just to constrain it, and he got that so that you can actually give basic commands in r- written. You sorry, it's not spoken written human language, natural language. Uh, I, I oh, assumed it was spoken. No, okay, no, no, so it's written right. natural language. Either way, that is. I'm, um, having worked with the guys at Morocco before, I know that it's a huge. Uh, place of research yeah. in South Africa at the moment. It's it, I, I don't know how well funded it is um, anymore. Probably but not no, particularly well. well I don't, I don't know. I, I know that Morocco was doing quite well when I was working um, for them, and um, and the guys that were working there are awesome. And so I know like this is this is like a project to set you yeah. up in a fairly good hey, research direction in the, South Africa. The thing is, this, the 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 speech to text is pretty much sorted. I mean, it's relatively, especially yes. for command-based, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, speaking really quickly. Uh, and you can also plug into the Google. Uh, but what I'm saying the is the, the, the solution, the, the text-to-speech, uh, sorry, uh, speech-to-text is quite sorted already. <coughs> That's studied. It's now making sense of what you've actually written and executing, you know, executing those commands, and which and is and really and cool. And if you, if you look, there's a video that you can watch where he speaks about yeah. why he came out. And it's that a lot of his friends get quite <coughs> intimidated by this, the hectic programming languages. So he oh, wanted yeah. to create it so they can use simple commands. So, you know, when they buy the robot, they can immediately very simply get it to start doing stuff left, right, forward, backwards. And then from that, they will then later on progress into the more complicated stuff. Mm. But it, it allows them quite quickly to start using this toy that they bought. And then foster the interest yeah. to, to go further. I so wonder if he, if he maybe put a layer on top that it just interprets certain keywords that he put there already, or does it actually learn language as it goes along? Not 100%. Well, no, sure. it doesn't learn language. He's got certain keywords, um, and okay. you do it, and what happens is that it, it then will generate the C code and compile it for you. Okay, yeah, uh, that's, to do that, it. So you can that's go, what I thought. Yeah. I think that there's, uh, I can't remember, I think it's 37 different. Uh, sensors and motors and all the rest of it that it works with. Mm. And it's you can go like forward, two, left, one, enable, X sensor, um, stuff okay, like so that. Okay, so then it just interprets what it gives you and makes... Yeah, but there's a little bit more intelligence than just straight interpreting it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's still pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool is there. Go, good go stuff. Check good it out. stuff for a grade nine pupil. Uh, and, and if anybody out there can tell me where to get Lego Mindstorms in South Africa nowadays. Yes. Easy. Yeah? Yeah, I've got I Where bought did the you other get it? Day. When? <clears throat> really? Yeah, I, mean, I bought it in the middle of last year. Yeah, middle of last year. No, go to, I will tell you exactly where to go. Go to the Grove 
there's a Lego store in the Grove, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay, they've got good. cool. Uh, and if they don't have, they've got their sister shop that is in the Irene Mall, I think, and they will also have. I was epically disappointed. I was in Hamleys of London, and I could not get Lego Mindstorms. Why don't you go to one of the Lego stores? But I have limited time. Top oh. tip thing: don't get the get you know, don't get the box set. Rather get the education kits. It's a little bit cheaper, and you get exactly the same thing. Only what you, what you don't get is you don't get the same manual, and you don't get it in a fancy box. You get it in like a crate. Oh, cool. But and you the just, downside is nothing. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you can even go download the manuals off the net, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Or well, we've also just had Johan uh, spamming the IRC spamming channel. The RFC. It's Apparently, my I think turn. you can go to uh, Blocks Universal <coughs> today, um, and then I think you can order it online. There we go. Like what? Cool. Got the website up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Moving so, along. Uh, sorry. Jay's Linux. All right. Stuart, this is your topic once again. Yep. Um, do you Let's get my intro? stuff out the way. Okay, this is pretty cool. It's called JS Linux. It is a um, JavaScript x86 emulator. And then to prove that the emulator works, he built a Linux kernel that will run in it with a whole little distro around it with a little C compiler and all your usual crap that goes with it. And now uh, your browser's Java script interpreter can boot Linux. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Uh, it, it's very, it is a bit limited. So um, there's things like he's got no floating point unit, no MMX, no SEC instructions. Um, there is a, a couple of other odd little segment registers that are a little bit different and things like that. It, but it emulates a 386 processor uh, quite closely. Well, good enough that it'll boot, a, it'll boot Linux. So it's fun. Yeah. And you were moaning about it. <laughs> you so said it was a bit limiting. <laughs> uh, you just said the same thing. It's a little bit limited. It does not yeah. this, doesn't it? Come on, it's your browser. Can, it's can you see it. if he's booting in the background there? Where's my desktop? Where's my <laughs> desktop, man? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hello, so Lin Linux users... But, you know, don't, what with GUI? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... Um, GUI is a crutch. Yeah. Uh, Just slows you down. <laughs> oh, my cheeks are burning. It's pretty, it's pretty good fun. And the, the cool thing is you can actually download the bin file. And then, of course, you can loop it with a loopback device. You can mount it. You can put your own software in there. You can bugger around with it. There's also a copy and paste there. So there's a... Yep. yep, you nice. can um, also, as far as it, you can download this entire thing and then just run it. You don't have to run it off his website. It's just a JavaScript file that you can download and then oh, okay. execute. Mm. It probably runs from your browser cache in any case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, you, you, could, you could, all you need to do is just point it to the, the bin file and you can store that locally as long mm. as you execute the JavaScript <laughs> locally. Okay. You'll be all good to go. And nice. then it's, it's fun to play with. Shoot. Yeah. Well, I, I think you'll play it out and like... Ten minutes. I think you know That's what the what you know what, you know where the joy of doing things like this is. It's making the damn thing work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once it works, you're like, it works. works. Sweet. Everybody moving on to the next project. Yeah. Thing I did. Well, there's <laughs> normally hopefully at that point you're going to hand it over. You know, there's going to be some other guy who goes, okay, that's working now, but I want to. Now scratch my next issue. Then takes what you've done and takes a little exactly. bit further. Exactly. He, some guy will come along and says, "I want to figure out how to build a floating point unit in it." So he'll go and yeah. code the floating point unit into it. And, they are and then I want to go and build a. I want to go build a frame buffer. And you build a frame buffer, and once you've got a frame buffer, you can load X on it, and once you've got X, and you can you load not desktop. whatever you want. You yeah. Run your desktop. Yeah. 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 Somebody says where this will actually be quite awesome. I'm sure you're going to mention this now. Is that for training? So imagine, no. you know, get your new guys in. You don't need to reboot a piece or anything. You just go yeah. open your web browser. And go, there it go is. to the site. And there, there's your uh, Linux your training yeah. environment. Yeah. 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 I guess no, that's, that is. And that's one guy. possible use. But the x86, in, the x86 emulator itself can be used for more than oh, yeah. running Linux. Oh, instance. yeah. No, so, you I mean, can do what you want with it then. So yeah. that's yeah. That, that there's potential in an x86 emulator. It's just in slow as hell. Yeah. Because <laughs> yes, it, it is, is interpreted. But I'm thinking now, this guy probably took months to get this right. And then one guy on a podcast goes, but it's limited. <laughs> <laughs> but what you could always do is you could take this, oh, what's it, C-Monkey, eh? C-Monkey is, is Mozilla's uh, JavaScript interpreter. Yes. So there's no reason why you couldn't run this embedded into another application, eh? Uh, so you don't okay. have to keep it in your browser. You could take C-Monkey, embed it into some other application and mm. actually have a, a x86 Spider emulator monkey. and... 
dude, then the possibilities are endless, especially maybe running legacy code in mm. an existing modern yeah. application. You could actually run an old DOS application in your... That would be awesome. C, C Monkey is a version Ooh. of the Mozilla browser. Spider Monkey is the interpreter. Spider Monkey. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, anyway. I'm just realized how cool it would be for your old DOS games. Well, hey, DOS box. Well, but essentially, you've got a, you can have a DOS box. You can take, you can take free DOS and you can install free DOS on it. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it doesn't talk out my ass now, but you can take free DOS, you <laughs> can install it, and then you can maybe play some Space Quest. <laughs> oh, Space Quest. Cool. Anyway. As long as you've got the CGA card and all the rest, so that might be a bit of a problem. You might need a bit of drivers written and et cetera, et cetera. Come on, there's, there's some guy out there going <laughs> to be I'm sure bored. they'll be able they to bought, do it. Was it in uh, Minecraft where they built yeah. a working... Uh, a working CPU, basically. It was... They had to... I mean, they 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 built the whole instruction interpreter. They built a... Uh, when it's loaded, they built memory. They built an ALU and all the rest. So, quite interesting. So, if some guys enough time to do that, come on. Just, <laughs> just upgrade this a bit. Uh, no, give us what sound output... And <laughs> so we can play games <laughs> on right. JavaScript. Okay, um, on to the next topic we picked up this week, which I, I found very interesting, but it's more for, let's pick it up. This is metallic glass, injected mold metal like plastics. Um, it's more of like a rapid for rapid it, yeah, prototyping. R- for as rapid, well. rapid prototyping. But also, apparently, this is incredibly strong. Yeah, I, I saw they said um, that. So it's stronger than steel. Wow. Um, and uh, the glass steel from D and D days. Sorry, like just yeah. But also, the when they say glass, it's not silicon. It's it's some. It's the crystal structure in the steel. Yeah, in the metal. Um, and basically, how they do it is they they basically got, got the crystals and stuff like that, and they pass a very high mm. pulse electric current through it, yeah. which causes it to heat up very quickly to about five hundred degrees Celsius so in half a millisecond. In, yeah, yeah five hundred like, microseconds. Yeah, and then they cool it down very quickly as well, so it yeah. doesn't have time to form the crystals. Yeah. Um, so you don't get the brittle. You, it doesn't turn into like a brittle ceramic, yeah. like glass. Or so you. But they injection mold that in the meantime. So they heat it up, injection mold it, and cool it very, very quickly. How, how would they cool it down that quick? Lots of water, or, or liquid nitrogen, liquid, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, whatever. Okay, I mean, it's the dyes. Well, the the, 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 uh, the injection mold dyes this, yeah. will be cooled, whatever okay. way they do it. They oh, don't no, really I thought go because the they article. had this cool trick to heat it up that quick. They had something no. more advanced than good old liquid nitrogen. Probably liquid nitrogen or something. So you can like make that. some very quickly, and this is, I think this is they're talking about more for hobbyists and stuff like this. Mm. High e- high end. I don't know about that too, uh, because the injection molding equipment is expensive. True, You're talking yeah. about millions and millions of rands. So you've got to be a pretty high end hobbyist to do that. But, but yeah. it's a lot faster to produce steel products or metal products than the traditional uh, cast and then machining. Uh, this will produce a, you know, a finished product as an injection molded bang that come out of the production like, like plastic parts, except they're metal. And they can test them. And, and, as, well, and according, to, according to this, that they're strong and all the rest. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. I think it's... But and I look, look into why this thing is so much stronger. Is it's because it's got the flexibility. Uh, which is the main problem like with ceramics that you're yeah. talking about uh, with a mug. Brittle. It's very, it's very, very strong, but the problem is you chip it very easily. Yeah. And this thing, because it still maintains flexibility of metal, uh, has that, that quality as well. So it's very cool. Very cool. Now is it millions of rands to make a report of millions no. of rands for the equipment? Millions of rands for the dyes. Okay, so once someone makes enough dyes, then well, they the, can every mass part, produce... Every yeah. part has to have a different dye. So if you want oh, to make... Okay. Yeah, it's whatever it's to you want. The die for, yeah, so it's, it's very every expensive. Every pot or every shape. Every shape. shape. Okay. You need a so die for the shapes. So if you need one component, you can make a hundred. Oh yeah, no. Okay. Once you got your die, I mean, once yeah. you die, then what you normally okay, so you normally you normally machine they machine the die mm. for you. Then you you got a prototype. Yeah, it's like a in normal injection die. molding. Then yeah, normal injection okay. molding, and then after that, you 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 maybe can get a couple of thousand runs out of that die. Yes. Or, and if you're happy with it, what you, they do is they harden it for you, and then you yeah. can run millions. Right, before it gets worn out. Before it gets worn yeah. out, yeah. Well, someone just has to start a factory that builds some product that this works for perfectly and then costs will come down. That's very interesting. Well, no, yeah. the costs won't come down because they've been doing injection molded plastics for this long. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. it's, the problem is, is it's, it's fine for mass, produce, mass production, mm. but it's not. That's how you can make very, very, very cheap plastic pots if you want to make millions. Mm. But if you want to make 10 of them, it's there's not, not rapid cost. prototyping methods that are better. Yeah, but we're talking expensive. millions now. Yeah, this is going to be millions of parts. 
It's, but the thing is, it's quicker. You can make them. You can make metal parts quicker than you could with the traditional casting and then machining. Okay. So how long before someone brings out a cell phone with a casing made like this? There's no reason why you can't. Sorry. Exactly, and the, that will. Yeah, they're yeah. actually talking about that. Um, in the, I was reading. Yeah. I was reading what what metallic glass is, and I was mm. saying, we've already got things where they've taken like gorilla glass on your your cell phones and stuff like that. They've got a very thin layer of, and this one they they, they use a heating mechanism apparently to make it incredibly strong, and they theorise mm. it can also make possibly make a very thin layer with this because it is a bit expensive. But the metal itself is not a. It's not. It's an alloy. It's a very. It's, it's rather not, exotic. It's not so good, so it's expensive. But if you make a very thin layer, you can make very very strong cases with it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. We're going to see some cool stuff coming. So yes. Watch this space. All right, uh, Stu. Talking. <laughs> oh, about it's a whole like all the other technology. Let's, <laughs> let's talk We're to coming, Stu. We'll come back to that later. I think that'll be our pick of the week. Then. <laughs> 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 technology <laughs> promised to change the world. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Talking about uh, new cool technology. Uh, Spark fun. Uh, uh, ARM-based. You, know, you said this was actually I, you saw it's, a it's, already. Yeah, I, I don't know. For the guys that are are, are pretty interested in, um, uh, you know. This Arduino prototype, you know, hobbyist mark maker type scene. Uh, everyone probably heard about the Arduino, and it's a uh, it's an Atmel eighty mega one sixty eight based processor, and all the rest. You got a little bit of I/O and all the rest. A little bit limited with its, I think it's sixteen megahertz is its maximum speed and the number of I/O ports and that. But they have uh, well a company called Leaf Labs. And the, the device is called the Maple, mm -hmm. but it's ARM-based. Running nice at 75 megahertz, gives you a whole bunch more input-output pins, but it's still compatible with the Arduino uh, language, relatively compatible, and the shields are all compatible. So check it out. And there's also one now that um, runs with the PIC32 processor. So, yeah. Oh, that reminds me, so I need to accomplish. I've got all these uh, launch pad things that I accidentally ordered <laughs> extra of, and then they sent me an extra pack on top of that. So um, it was actually think of a nice competition to give give some away. Give some away. Yeah. What is that? Launch pad? It's a MSP430 microprocessor dev kit. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So. Um, very cool, very mm. cool. but it's Come it's fun and it's it's relatively cheap. You can play with arms now and. Um, it gives you a bit more power, and it's still compatible. So yeah, and there's nothing to say that you have to use the the Arduino language or anything like that. You can go nuts. You can go the usual, go program it in assembler if you want. But yeah, yeah. Um, something I don't know if you ran through the the stats. It's it's quite uh, it it seems quite slow. Um, clock speed seventy two megahertz. Uh, then the flash memory one twenty eight k SRAM twenty k. That's a crap load, dude. I understand, but I mean, if, you, <laughs> if, if, you, if you're talking about the, the kind of stuff we're used to seeing now. Uh, yes, but this is aimed for completely different. Yeah, no, I and, know it's and, and, stuff. And, and look at the price as well. Yeah, I agree. This is like 40 bucks. <laughs> Fair enough. So, yes, if you want anything bigger, go look at something like the Beagle board, hey? Mm. Then it's got a, that's got a 1 gigahertz OMAP processor, does H.264. It's got Ethernet. It's got four USB ports. It's flipping, I don't know, gig of... A, half a gig of RAM and a couple of gigs of, of storage on it and things like that. And that, that's like just over a thousand rand for okay. that dev kit. Yeah. So, yeah. It's fun to play with. It's awesome to play with, yeah. Um, the cool thing with that is it's, it's proper open source hardware. So the entire, you know, the, the schematics are open. Everything's open on it. So um, you're not going to really build it yourself because it's, I think they use a six-layer board. Mm. And they use uh, what's it package on package where they put the memory on top of the processor package. Um, so you can't. So it's not system on chip. It's it's the system on chip. No, they use the OMAP ARM OMAP Cortex whatever processor system yeah, on yeah. chip. Okay. But they pack the RAM on top of the uh, on the package. It's called package on package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you can't really do at home. It's yeah, like BGA. Sure. I don't know, thousand pin BGA or something like that. So you can't do that at home. Yeah. But it, the boards are pretty cheap, and it's it's good Come to on. play with. You can't do it at home. You're not trying hard enough. You, dude, you can. <laughs> no, no, okay. No, I, sorry, I lie. No, I'm, I lie. I'm, I'm no, no, I lie. You can do it at home. You, you wouldn't want to. Oh, no, no. If, if you, you can buy the equipment, and you can really do it. And, I mean, if you're willing to spend, you know, 50K or something like that, you can buy the equipment to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're cool. going to have to do one of, more than one in order to make that. Unfortunately, yeah, that, that's the thing. If you make it financially viable, you're going to have to do more than one. <laughs> but anyway. All right. It's something else that's a bit sad is uh, that NASA is actually NASA. As finally, before Stu corrects me again, <laughs> um, as far as set the uh, final space shuttle flight. Yeah. Um, for anybody who's thinking, yes, but hasn't that happened already? Um, those are as each of the specific space shuttles are being retired. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. This is, will be the final space shuttle that they're going to be retiring. And then after that, Stu, you were saying? That's it. They're gonna, yeah, no, but then they're basically going to rely more on no, no, uh, that's, that's commercial people for to now, get space. Yeah, it looks that way. Looks like the Russians So, so all yeah. the yeah. Yeah. They did. <laughs> So and all then, the kids that wanted to grow up to be astronauts. Better learn to speak Russian or Chinese. Yeah. Maybe a bit of Indian's pretty good too. Or, 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 or <laughs> for the Hindi. English, go, go work for um, Virgin Atlantic. Virgin, Virgin Galactic. Galactic. There we go. But then it's private. So if you want it, but they're not going to go to space. And yet. you're not doing science. You are flying tourists into space. Yeah. Well, hey, you're there's a, some interesting things that's, that's happening there, hey. Um, but yes, as far as NASA for anywhere in the short term, I mean, you know, I'm not taking, they I'm not saying, change it I'm once. not, no, it will. Of course, I mean, when they, they've changed their focus a little bit. Instead of just, Sending people into orbit, they're going to look maybe a bit more of a long term getting people back on the moon and getting to Mars type. Of, type o- also, vision. they're doing a lot of non manned uh, space flights. Oh, yeah, like no, that. that'll still carry on. There's still the some good hardcore the, engineering happening. No, no, but the th- this is not a necessarily a bad move because the shuttle, what was it really? It was just a, sh- it was a, uh, a extremely expensive taxi that took people from Cape Canaveral. To the International Space Station. Yeah, but that it, was it also it. It was it was mm. used to to maintain stuff uh, up there. No, and not really. It was just sort of thing. basically well, to sh- no. They were using the space station's arm, the Canada arm too, okay. and things like that. It was just really a bus to transport people up there. Now, yeah, you know, when they were still building the, there was a different story when they were still building the, yeah, the yeah, space yeah. station. But the one thing is, it was extremely expensive. I mean, it's billions. Almost, I mean, it's, it's it's you know, it's hundreds of millions, almost close to a billion dollars a launch, eh? So all that money now will become, and it's still going to become available. And then they're going to just maybe do something cooler with it. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 not doom and gloom, but oh. no, it's, I mean, but it's sad. I mean, it's it's it a, is, it's, it's an end, end of an era. era, and it's it's an end of an era. It is, no, it is. And I mean, the shuttles were amazing pieces of equipment. I mean, oh, yeah. probably the most complicated th- things human kind has ever built. So, yeah. And then we fired it from a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, keep an eye on a couple of the private guys. They're going to be doing some cool stuff now. Mm. Uh, what's this? Uh, SpaceX are planning their big, uh, they've, you know, they launched their Falcon 9 rocket. That's their, now they've got a, their next one is the Falcon 9 Heavy. That's going to lift 53 tons of payload. Nice. And that's going to be launching now within the next uh, 12 months. They're going to be doing the test flights on that. And that, as part of that, they're also going to, they've got us, they've got their man's capsule. That they, we've talked about this before. They've got their man's mm. capsule and they're going to carry on. And I think it's going to be really interesting. They'll be able to do some cool stuff. Yeah. And then the guys that fire the Intelsat stuff into space, they're also still around. They also have fairly oh, hardcore rockets. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, it's just the man space program. Yeah. NASA's still going to be doing all the cool. They've got Curiosity, um, the new Mars rover that's going to be launching next year. Um, that's going to be flipping. That's going to be another huge mission. Uh, so yeah, no, they're still doing awesome so, science. But it's just, but they're also proven it's not that cost-effective to send humans into space. Mm. You can nowadays you can send a robot that's more, it can do more. It can stay out there longer. Uh, that's the thing. Even if it can't do more, uh, in in this, you know, what, what you're saying is it might not be able to do more in the same amount of time as a human, but it just stays out there for years, years and years and years, and, and it just keeps on going. Also, you you don't need as much uh, making sure you don't need to make sure that the rocket won't explode as much. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which I also said is a big yeah. thing why they'd rather send robots because then they can build them cheaper. Humans are really, really, really complicated to keep alive in in a vacuum. It's we need water and waste yeah. disposal and lots of electricity and robots air. are just e- air yeah. and <laughs> robots are just easier. No, yeah. no, no. Humans have become a liability on but, their own mission. But it's going to be this is not this will be I th- you know they are going to have to look at 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 some point, at some point and but we'll knows? find once China starts getting a bit more competitive the, the Russians start, and etc start entering in again and all yeah. that I, I know I know we're sticking on this topic a little bit longer but um, if any of you guys, any of you guys if the call came out listen we're sending we're sending a colonization team Hell to yeah. Mars 
You drop everything here. Oh, yeah, screw that. Climate Even if they said there's a chance you're not coming back, screw that, I'm on that first flight. Yeah, you're probably not coming back. <laughs> I mean, the whole point of colonizing Mars is the same thing as colonizing the new world. Oh, yeah, I know. Bugger that. Yeah. I'll be front, front, front of the queue. I, I don't know. Because ten, ten years would ago, you would actually gone. be doing... Oh, dude, come on. Well, you'll be you'll obviously be in your area of expertise. That's why they'd be sending yeah, you. Yeah, that's another they, problem. They're going to need... They're, they're, that's another, like, yeah. My area of expertise, I'll be back programming something <laughs> to make sure something on that side does it correctly. Yeah. I, I'm unlikely to be running around, maybe fixing something or making something work on that side, but then you be a glorified handyman. On Mars, dude. I'd rather say... <laughs> just personal... Well, well, what are the astronauts now? They glorified construction workers. Yeah. No uh, offense and, to astronauts. And but highly qualified no, ones. I know. Oh, no, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. They're, all, they're so. all doctors and they've got, I mean, they've got PhDs and, and they, you know, they are te- a lot of them are still Air Force pilots and things like that. No, no, no. But really, what are they doing up there? It's Tightening they, bolts they, and assembling things. Yeah, but they, they have that high level of person. For when something goes wrong. Of yeah, the mundane jobs is a loss. And of that's why you said a high level person to Mars. Yes, things do go wrong. Yeah, and that's why... 1% the, of the time. Yeah, but when it goes wrong, you need someone oh, who can yeah. cope and yes. deal with it. No, look, we've got nothing against these guys, and oh, they yeah. are the right people f- for us to see. They've got the right stuff. And I'm just thinking, what is, all what is that training, and then 99% of the time, you're sitting there like... <laughs> doing something, <laughs> it just, it's just... That's still dead, you're on Mars, Roger. or wherever, so... Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, we're getting on top. We're getting, getting on top of it. Let's Geek gets the call, we'll see you. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you can send me. All right. Okay. Um, the next thing, and this is what more uh, about data, since none of us get enough data. We just heard back from Barry, by the way. And we're saying he bought the cheapest uh, data you can get. Cheapest, cheapest internet connection. Yeah. Uh, shame in, in Brisbane. 30 megabits per second. Yeah. <laughs> it's bidirectional, isn't it? Or is it? I don't know. Is if it's symmetric. 30, I don't know if it's symmetric, but it's 30 meg. If it's cable, it's probably symmetric. <laughs> yeah. But it's, 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 it's a fixed cable. channel. So it's probably 30 meg, and that's what you get to use up and down. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know the specific details, but yes, I will find out from him and find <laughs> out. But all we were saying is, while we were chatting on Skype the other night, he downloaded StarCraft, did the, the StarCraft ISO, and that like four and a half, oh, four needed, odd gigs. You needed in the, the StarCraft in the, to in the couple of minutes while we were chatting, which That's is a bit just unfair. Evil. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, um, but basically, some guys have done, and they put a, a laser record of dot through a fiber. Yeah. Um, the really record, no, this is the record trans, yeah, the world record for data transmitted over fiber optic, okay. isn't it? I, I've now read through this. I'm not 100% sure if that is the, the, the record because what they say is you can effectively, the amount of data you can push through a fiber depends on how many lasers you have. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. No, 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 so, not, yeah, yeah, one fiber. Okay, so, yes. so this, is, this is something I had to quickly write up for my broadband. Um, this is the, now the record for a, a single, single laser. laser transmission yes, through fiber, fiber. So and and the trick here because with OFDM um, that's that's orthogonal frequency division multiplexing you can you can sh- uh, use as many lasers as you want multiplex them onto the same fiber at different yep. frequencies L- just to explain what that means is basically uh, different with things you got lasers of different colors of lights. Lights. yeah um, and you then basically put put all those into the uh, and you yeah. just split them out at the and other you split end. them out at the other end and it sounds very simple it's a little more complicated yes, to split yeah. them out now what they were able to do is they take one laser and they are able to effectively multiplex multiple you know different colors on on the same fiber with one laser and get 26 terabit per second over that and, fiber. and just over to that explain fiber. what the advantage of this is Cost. Lasers are expensive, expensive very yeah. expensive. And mm. eventually, where, where this will trickle down, hopefully down to consumer grade, is your card will mm. never have more than one laser. And what about, is this compatible with this, is this technology compatible with existing fiber? It, so, it sounds like it because the, yes. the, the, the cool thing with fiber is um, you, you, just have to, you, just, you, you just have to work in the wavelength that that fiber runs at. So I think the current so fiber we're using is 15, 15 nanometer fiber. So as long as the lasers operate in that so wavelength, so the photo multiplier, the, the boosters down the for undersea cables and stuff will be able to mm. as long as it's within that frequ- within the, that I'm, spectrum. I'm not the new tech of sure with the booster. The new tech of boosters is an is an uh, is they, they use, optical. Eh? They use it's it's optical. Yeah. yeah. With, the, with the way this works, it might mess mess around with it, because actually it also works on on the intensity of the light. Okay. So it measures uh, the the colors and uses intensity to basically get all the different. Mm signals Channels. out again yeah. so if you get something that slightly skews that or alters the, the ratios of that in any way it might break it so I don't but know. you could character characterize your repeaters 
and then tweak it on the other side. Yeah, hypothetically. So it, it, yeah. In the future, it might be as I just want to say it But it's interesting that it's existing. You know, the, the, the cable in the ground is, for the vast majority of the cable in the ground, all you need to do is replace the equipment at the end. And this is when I chat to all these guys, like like when I chat to Altec or, or, or whoever is building these things, Nokia, um, you know, they... Uh, you know that that's pretty much what they say. That's why they say the design capacity. Like you'll you'll read these articles yeah. and you'll read them on my broadband because they get read, um, and everybody runs them. You know, oh, you know, Wax's design capacity is five point seven terabits know, or, or five point one two or whatever it is now terabits per second. Because people want to know how fast stuff goes. Yes, but it's it's largely irrelevant because. That that thing that design capacity is something that can be upgraded by swapping out the equipment on both ends. Yeah, zump. Exactly. As long as the repeaters can. Yeah. Yeah, but them. that's a solvable problem. I think those are solvable no, well, problems. they talk about like the repeaters on uh, what was our first cable. The, the, your biggest, your biggest that, issue. They, they were electro easy. Yeah, yeah. That. So that was no, not did, easy. You're talking about Sat3 Sat3. Oh, yeah, yeah. but yeah. they were still old technology. That was still, old, yeah. that's that's still electrical, te- optical, electrical, electrical conversions. Again. Yeah, no, no, those no, ones are no, no, because there's a you you can't upgrade all. You could you could pull the cable up and replace them, I guess, but you can't put new firmware on them or something like that. And there's You'd have to re- repl- you'd have to replace the laser diodes, um, and the 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 big <clears throat> thing uh, what these guys like the biggest challenge is not necessarily the repeaters themselves. The guys say mm. depending on the technology you use. Like for instance, they explained to me that if you want to upgrade from they've got ten. 10 uh, gigabit per second per wavelength, I think, yeah. uh, technology, and, and they've now got 40 gigabit per second per wavelength technology, and then you've got like 128 wavelengths per fiber, right? Um, to make that switch, you need repeaters that are relatively, you know, that are slightly closer together yeah. uh, um, okay. than, than uh, with 10 gigabit per second technology. Mm. So if you didn't build with that in mind, if, you're, if you didn't put your repeaters closer together than they needed to be, you can't just seamlessly upgrade. upgrade. Cool. So that can be an issue. But still, it's it's Martha's. It's really good. Cool. It's, it's good. good. As Martha I, I Stewart, would, as Martha would, Stewart and, say, if, would if, say, if, if it's get, a good thing. The, hey, Tim. Um, <laughs> what's it? The square kilometer, right? Yes. There's lots, large, large quantities of data that need to be shipping around. Yeah. And it's the more data we can ship, the better. That's mm-hmm. pretty crazy. You saw some. They were tweeting <clears> some <throat> of the stats on the quantities yes, of data. But re- must remember that is also not stored data, eh? A large percentage of that, if actually saw how much actually needs to get stored, it's still scary. I don't amounts. know, it's scarily huge, but it's not exabytes a day of data that they only store. So it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good day to be in the storage business in I think this country. I think we need to buy some, some Seagate stock. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, and I think just, a lot of that stuff is going to be custom built. That probably and is. Not, yeah. <laughs> and, and on a similar note, do you guys notice all the fiber they're laying in Pretoria now? Yes, they have digging up uh, Centurion as yeah, well. I always see them laying it mm. everywhere, and it, I don't get any. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like DFA because it's in-road trenching. I don't know if anybody else uses in-road trenching, but I know DFA, DFA does. does. I thought I thought Neotel did as well. That's in, but they use DFA. A lot of these guys uh, use DFA. Yes, too. yeah, okay. So the Neotel, the, when you see Neotel, the in the in-road trenching, that's normally DFA. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. DFA, well, which is dark fiber Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, but I don't know. I mean, I know for a fact DFA do in road trenching. Yes, I do. don't know if anybody else does because no. Neotel also lays their own fiber, so it can be mm, quite a confusing knows. situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. And I drive past them in Camellia Road every morning, and no, I can good. see it progressing. The uh, more fiber we have in this country, the better. Yeah. Now, just bring it to my house. Yes. Soon. Well, they do. And and four to five years time. Centurion to ten meg. They're doing those yeah. trials down in Stellenbosch, eh? Fiber to the home. Yeah. Trials in Stellenbosch. Yeah. And in Durban. Yeah. B- well, they're close. Because it's hard here. It's hard here to do it. Uh, yeah. You do it in, in, in communities which, which are small so that you can also dig up the roads a lot easier. Yeah. And it's a relatively high-tech community because of its university and oh, there's okay. so UCT there and there there's are. Stellenbosch. Well, UP is up here. But the, yes, the, yeah. the, 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 the big issue I see as well is Joburg, Durban, Cape Town all have their own metro fiber networks, government-built networks, essentially, right? And, and there's a rumor at Pretoria has it as well. Oh, yeah. Well, I haven't yeah. got anything confirmed on that, but the fact is, is that Pretoria hasn't. I mean, all these other ones are going, starting to go live. Like Joburg recently can switched you, on a node. Can you actually buy services on that then? Um, not yet. It's going to be government stuff first, and yeah. then whatever spare capacity they've got, they say they'll sell. Okay. Um, so, but I mean, so uh, that, th- that was one spec, you know, you know, like one thing we speculated about why these, these guys were rolling out fiber to the premises services, fiber to the home services, specifically in Durban. Durban has a fiber backbone you can just plug into mm. um, mm. from the government. Yes. So you don't have to go and buy transit on somebody else's network to get, on, you know, in the metro area to just do your thing there. So, yeah, anyway. Cool. 
if Pretoria can just get him into that drink, <laughs> that'll be great. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. Uh, just into the next one, which is Department of Defense in America. Stu, you, uh, I'll go into this a bit. They basically released a. Sorry, I've been adding a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this week has been scarily busy. Um, Department of Defense released a. They've been doing a study for a study. while. Study, yeah. And this is the report that finally released about. It's not. 68, 68 page mm. guide. It it's actually way. quite short. It is short, but it's got some interesting yeah. information in there. Um, and it's basically was looking at open source versus closed source. And I think the most interesting. Um, comment that came out of there was about a, about a gun. So imagine they sold you a gun, but then they said, actually, in fact, if you want to reload it or clean, clean it. it or service it, everything, it has to be gone through to um, some external provider to, to do all that stuff for you. They would get laughed out. And they said, now, why would you now accept that, not accept six, similar limitations with your software? Mm-hmm. Um, this, this is mission critical stuff. Now it breaks. Well, okay, well, they've got to go fix it. So how long are they going to take to fix it? It's not in the external service provider's interest to do it as quickly as possible. Not saying that they won't, but there's no requirement. You know, the longer they take, the more they'll get paid to fix it. Um, where if it's open source, you can also then say, okay, who's going to fix it quicker? You can start bidding between different people. And also you can fix certain things. If it needs to be fixed tomorrow, you can get somebody in-house to fix it. Yeah, and it's not just the fact that it's it's uh, external pro- an external service company gonna f- is the only person. What happens if they disappear? Go bankrupt. Yeah. The company closes. Bang! All the guys are fired. Disappear. That's it. No, yeah. who's going to support it? There are ways to mitigate that, but I mean the the, the bottom line is yeah, and and, and now the other things to go the proprietary. Mm. If you want to like take that take that even further, certain proprietary solutions require you to check in to a server. Yeah, you know you've got some sort of licensing server or whatever. Yeah, Imagine security. you've got to ask permission before you reload your gun every time. Yeah, and the security implications of that as well, because then it's a denial. Of, uh, an attacker could easily deny Just you destroy the login server. service. Yeah. So and all, all, all of a sudden, sudden the things of tracking those packets to the login service. Yeah. It's well, interesting. Well, uh, with speaking of licensing, an example that happened to us end of last year, we've got a training center with about 10 PCs. Give Basic Pastel Training has been running Windows XP for ages. And somehow our uh, volume license key got flagged as not genuine. So on the morning of training supposed to be taking place, PCs don't want to log in, say, that's Your license it. is, you know, it's 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 a flaw, and you call Microsoft, and uh, I've got to redo the whole thing. You, you're powerless. And the problem is, okay, you unfo- unlucky because it's you only had ten, mm. uh, ten machines. No, we had to no those in the training center. The machines we're working on in the office have oh, to be everything. done as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, but, but still, you're. How, I mean, you're really, you're not a you're not a multinational company. No. So to try get any service out of Microsoft we, we is going to be a bit of a problem. Upgrade to Windows Seven. They just said. <laughs> yeah. like we can't re- we can't reissue you Windows XP licenses anymore. Tough. Yeah, we're stuck. Mm. So that we sounds go. awfully convenient. Yeah, yes. yeah. You it does, doesn't it? But yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, I do know they've been trying to get rid of. Sorry, my BSO meter just while. revved in the red there for a second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, this this the, the 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 guide is called Open Technology Development Lessons Learn Lessons Learned and Best Practices for Military Software. <laughs> Something interesting you mentioned that came out of that as well was the fact that they say, please stick with existing licenses. licenses. So this is, this is um, it, it, it's best practices for military software, but it also applies to any contract that you want to, uh, want to do is lawyers. Okay. Yeah. And lawyers don't, are, like change. don't like change. So that was one big thing is stick to licenses that people know. Don't try roll your own license. Stick to GPL, Apache, BSD. Um, BSD license. There was a list. There's a list of ones that they recognize as open source licenses. Because if you come along and you say you roll your own, well, it's untested in court. It's untested in court. It is untested in the organization. So it's an the organizational issue. The too. lawyers get involved and it all gets messy. So and that was one thing. Is stay away from lawyers. <laughs> well, more because they. Err on the side of caution. extreme and caution, and it's going to be costly having yeah. to re- investigate a brand new license. So it comes to the fact is if you're if you are if you're bidding for a project, right, and you say your this equip this equipment software is going to use this license, but it's not a, a, a you know it's not an open official or a a, a, a recognized it. open license. Even though it might be completely compliant, it's just never been tested in court and all the rest. And your competitor comes along 
well, sorry, your competitor is most likely going to get the contract just because of the license you used. So it's interesting. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. But what I was saying as well, this is best practices for military software, but there's a lot of parallels with corporate or just you know software in general. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of parallels. Yeah, like you mentioned Android, uh, but we don't, yes, yeah. don't want to – I mean the fact that they roll their own license. Some of the parts in their own yeah. – in a, a, it's an Apache-like license. Eh? Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a DYOF. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, yeah. There, there's a cool acronym for do whatever the hell you want with this license. <laughs> But anyway, it's it's interesting. Yeah. Right. But it, if you if you want a little bit more information about it, um, have a listen to um, the Twit Networks. Oh man, what's the open source show? Beats me, dude. Uh, Floss, Floss Weekly. Okay. Have a look there. There's a one of the uh, well, they have a guy from the Department of Defense actually speaking about how they use open source software in the Neat. Department of Defense. And this, he, was te- he was speaking about this paper as yeah. well. So it's quite Something our government can actually to. learn from since they've got an open source um, uh, software policy mm. that's largely unimplemented. Yeah. Hmm. Right, okay, cool. okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Spacing there a bit, Tim. Uh, I'm just checking. A dead air, dead air. Buffering, so I'm busy looking why. Um, uh, where we are? Okay. Uh, Shall we just move Paralyzed on? Paralyzed man can stand and walk again. Your, this was yours, yes. finally. I um, actually <laughs> found this incredibly interesting. Basically, with a spinal implant, they've got a guy to be able to stand and walk again. Um, very he's cool. an ex-sports person in America. Let me just pull up the thing. Um, and what they've done is basically oh. feeding in uh, neural... Basically, they... He was in a car accident and he suffered a spinal injury. Yeah. And is it a that, proper? Is it a break in the spinal cord or is it just far a, as I know, it's, it's, break. it's a break? So he okay. doesn't have any signals going through to his leg. Yes. Now they can now falsely induce these signals and and let him then walk and that stand. Is and so I think cool. currently they've got that he can stand for two minutes. Yep. Unaided. Very cool. That's What's the very, limitation? Very cool. Fatigue or just the signal? I would imagine, I think it's still fatigue. His, his body just isn't up to it. Okay. And also, there's a lot of control systems. I gather this took them like two years on a treadmill just to get it up to this to, to where it is now. Mm. Um, just training and seeing what changes, what to get the, the right muscles yeah, working on the rest of it. Um, though, they don't really go into how is he then seeing the message of what he wants to do. So it means a lot of brain. It needs a lot of training from. It's not just a plug and play, no. plug and play type thing. It, you're going to have to train your brain mm-hmm. to sense to to actually. I, th- I think it's not just that. It's also <clears throat> from their side is working out what to stimulate. Yes, to yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's from both yeah, sides of it. You've got so many nerves yeah. in your legs to walk. So you know every muscle needs to flex at the right moment and and, and do all these yeah. things. Because um, it's very interesting with these brain implants, the plasticity of the brain. To you know, with where they've done it with a bit of um, with people that are blind, where it's a it's a fault. It's their brain's still fine, yes. but the the, the nerves the are damaged. Visual processing bit is still there. Yeah. So that what they can do is they'll take a little a pad of electrodes planted on the visual cortex on the back of your head here, and will show, start showing braille symbols, and the person with a, with some tr- with training he can well, rewire his brains one, to understand what the sensor is sending. So they working it the other way around slightly is they don't actually need to understand the way the brain, com- you know, have a complete understanding of the way the brain processes signals. They can feed similar signals in and let the brain do the relearn, the, relearn and rewire to understand what it's been sent. Talking about cool. that visual processing, the one that I thought was cool is they made a cell phone app. And basically it takes your cell phone takes pictures and then it converts it to an audio signal. And through the audio signal, which is basically tracing out the, 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 the yeah. scan lines like your TV, the person can see. Yep. And they've also That's got awesome. ones where the guy puts a, it's a uh, sensor on his tongue. On his tongue. And sh- using the nerves on his tongue, he can then – that is a bit more coarse. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's, it was it's a 64 by 64 grit. Or something like that, yeah. But he can then – and it, it's not that you taste. His head relearns it that he's seeing. But though with it, there was actually electrical stimulation that they were using. Yeah, now. on the tongue. Yeah. yeah. W- which is also cool with that one is actually uh, using that also now for pilots. So that they don't need to be looking at all the instruments Very all the time. That's an interesting thing. So basically the, the altitude sensors, all the rest of it, they're feeding into the tongue. <laughs> and they're testing that as, as a way of getting more. Imagine for the, like fighter pilot type thing, you know. No, it's for Boeing pilots. Oh, Im- imagine you jack into your Boeing. <laughs> and you do like a <laughs> this thing in your mouth. <laughs> I think would, imagine you can drive it, but you don't look at you, you don't need to look at your dashboard or yeah. your sensors. What the rev is, the temperature, 
it's just fed direct. Your brain's just processing it, and you, the granularity that you can process it is so much better. And then you can actually use your brain to. Uh, mm. It's, well, it's very interesting. interesting. I saw very a documentary way back. I was still at school about a guy who built himself a pair of lenses on a helmet that flipped his world upside down. Oh, yeah. We've spoken about that a couple and, of times. And the brain yeah. reinterpreted the same so you can see right. That's plasticity. Yeah. And yeah. what I've not, just not tweaked is that the eyes don't see. It's just the eyes are a method for taking to light. No, to, no, to, no. To, the to, eyes do do a lot of processing. Yeah, yeah. but apparently they, they're, they, they're, they're very gathered. weak processors compared to no. other, yeah, they, other eyes in nature. Don't they allow your nerves to interact with the light? So if you can yes. get, get other, a patch of skin on your head to interact with light, you should be able to see through it. Well, I don't know yeah, about that. Yeah, but, they, but basically, it, 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 uh, your, your know, eyes I'm not just, a neurobiologist. Your, your yeah. eyes, the way I understand right. it, just reflect the, the, the light onto your retina. Yes, they do. And no. that, Onto your rods and cones and all the rest. Yeah. There is processing that happens from the point of it, of the photon hitting the your your rod or a cone. There is processing started, yeah. so well, it starts processing there, and it's even in the optic nerve. There's processing oh, okay. and all the rest. It's where I stand. It's not a camera. Put it this way: it's not a camera yeah. that's feeding a video signal into your head. It's not like that. Okay, doesn't quite but work. But also, like the that. other advantage are is the neural density. So the the is so there's high, a high, high density, neural yeah. density. Okay. So the amount of yeah, you'll have an inferior light that can get in and feeding the information. Because I did yeah. also I read another article where they're talking about where they're implanting electrodes into the person's brain, and they said the main problem is. That electro that they can produce is so huge in relation to yes. those nerves there. Mm. So they, they can never give the guy the, the, the level of sight we have. Because it's a coarser signal. They can't get the electrode small enough. Okay. The, the, thing was, the thing was, that was what I was saying with the Braille. Mm. Basically, it was an 8x8 eight eight grid. Yeah. That's, what the, that's the best yeah. resolution yeah. they're no, going to be able I, to I do. I agree with that. I just yeah. think that it's just getting what you use to stimulate your nerves. And if the brain can interpret that stimulation, yes, that's what we use. So you need to replicate the whole sensor. Yeah. Yes. That's the, way you inject the, signals, you, the way you inject that signal into whatever it is, the rest of the pathway. Mm. Yep. As far as I understand it, there's a big but problem But the nerve there. can do whatever the brain wants it to do. Yes. If you can just Within get reason. something to it. Yeah. Within reason as well. Okay. Within reason of what actually its signal it understands. Mm. But there is some plasticity there as well. Mostly in the brain, though, not in the nerve. No, it's in the nerves. It's, well. learned, it's wow. a learned. It's, 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 it's a little bit, though. I don't yeah. want to spend too much time no, on no, this because, because I read another article which compares <laughs> which compares <laughs> us to reptile eyes, for instance, human eyes to reptile eyes, and also the six parent flipping world upside down you and stuff. You can see this is a topic we're all quite interested in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, but but I'm not going to get into it now. But essentially, the human eye, it turns out, is a far weaker sensor in that oh, sense. Yeah. It's it's a great sensor because it leaves a lot of the work up to the brain. So that in that way, you can flip your world upside down and it reinterprets it but reptiles for instance can't do that if you take out their eye and and um attach it back upside down they they can't they can't uh sort of figure out how to well, someone somewhere took a reptile's eye flipped it over put it back and said has it and he goes <laughs> Science! <laughs> For science! What did they say? It, what's it, uh, if science is not pissing people off, you're not doing it correctly. <laughs> Just, if you want to, there's a very cool book. It's Elephants on Acid. Yeah, oh, go, go, no. go find and read it. It's got some of the experiments that have been done through history and, and like one of them is they gave elephants acid, acid to, to see, see what, what happened. Due to them, it made them paint. And all these weird and stuff. But there's also some, some more macabre experiments in there. So I'm not going to go into those, but I highly recommend it. Can I, can I just cool. finish off the eye thing with a pet project that one day I want to do when I grow up? I want to take a lot of cameras, mount them all over my eyes, and you have did? two screens here. I want to see if my brain can learn to see all around. Like an arachnid. Yeah, yeah, like an insect. Could do something huh. like that. If, and if my because that if if you can sweep your world upside down and your brain can well, relearn yeah, that, yeah, well, well, there why was that do it with so Just test it with four. Yeah. Or something like that, yeah. And put a put a no, or you just put a, a basically a, a fisheye lens on the top, facing straight up, or you can, you get can a parabolic to mirror that. on the top. Uh, mm. The guy did it. There was an a experiment where the guy put uh, um, haptic feedback, those little pager motors, basically the same thing that gives you vibration mm -hmm. in your cell phone, yeah. and he built a belt with that and linked it to a compass and gave oh, himself yeah. a gave the himself a magnetic sensor. heading sense. Oh, okay, and he he yeah he said it was a great help. For navigating mm. in a city and things like that. Mm. So there's probably no reason why you couldn't be able to do that. Mm. All right, I'm going to move us along. Yes, we just yeah. time into our second last story, which is basically um, <laughs> Angry <laughs> Birds. And anybody doesn't like Angry Birds, get out. Turn off now. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off now. 
some guy went and basically did a study on angry birds. And he was looking at... He's a physicist, by the he's way. A yeah, he's, he's a physicist. No, I imagine he's a physicist or something like <laughs> no, that. No, he is a physicist. He, uh, he writes. He writes the. He signs articles for Wired. Sorry, if I hadn't known. Oh, that this, sorry. I would have seen that he was a physicist or an engineer or somebody with that kind of background. Yeah. He's got all the physics, and he, you can see he's used to looking at this. Um, and essentially, what he did, he did a not quite a screen a screen capture, but a video capture of Angry Birds. Now that no, he did Chrome. screen capture as well. He ra- he had two. He did it from a video feed, and he had a ran, ran a screen capture as well on it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just mean not a still. Oh no, 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 no. This is basically, live as yeah. it was working. Yeah. Um, basically, to work out, did they use real physics in shooting the bird out of the catapult? Yeah. And, and you can see he's got all all the maths here on what it should be doing, and then he's plotted graphs like real life versus what he's actually visually seeing <laughs> and the acceleration and then he goes and talk about you know in actual fact if this was real life the one bird would be heavier than the other so you would have to learn how to you change initi- yeah exactly the um, basically at the end of the day he realized they all get released at about 20 me- meters per second, second. and n- that's it but the gravity constant that they use is quite accurate it's about 9.8 okay yes so, so it's earth gravity yeah it's reasonably good gravity but the catapult is 22 if you pull it to the maximum 22 meters per second. Doesn't matter what angle you use or what uh, bird you use. And the developers at Angry Birds go, <laughs> Why? <laughs> what have we Why? done? No. I'm finished. They went, Cool, somebody else is writing on a program. <laughs> We're going to make more money. <laughs> yeah. Not on Android. More geeks. No, but. I make you money on Android. Yeah, I know. Ads. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. Well, it's it's fun. Uh, no, it's cool. awesome. I'm fairly sure they didn't code it that way. But dude, um, did you never? Did you? Sorry, uh, maybe I'm just a bit weird. Uh, remember Lemmings? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You, did you never do this with Lemmings to get your timing right? You drew. You, you just take a felt of mark, uh, you know, whiteboard marker. And you draw all the all the. You work it out where you need to trigger something on a lemming to get it to f- to fall perfectly through the hole, and that you never did that. Draw never had it, to. Ah, oh, flip. Okay. <laughs> and you draw with a, with a marker on your draw screen. Draw a marker on your screen, and then you can mark out exactly what spots. So you can calculate it all beforehand. So you know the speed of the lemmings walk at. Calculate it out when you're, sp- and then as a lemming crosses that particular point on the, oh, the you screen, have to trigger like a you can trigger a parachute or trigger a a build or something like that to get all your lemmings through without anyone okay. dying. Can't say I've ever done it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> From one guy doing some very geeky stuff to another person doing some geeky stuff. Get this up for you guys as well. What is that? It has to be slow in the title. Uh, it yes. has to be good. It's volume on there. Uh, yeah, I can, on. I can hear it a little bit. I'm just thinking white poker face. Why not? I'm also. <laughs> uh, did you. Well, seeing that, did you see. Um, did you see Adam Savage's one? No, no. We, Which at one? at uh, the Maker Fair last week. Maker yeah, Fair. Yeah. He stood in a he stood in a Faraday cage, and they played the Doctor Who sound, uh, the Doctor Who intro, and he did a little robot dance and that on it, also with a Tesla coil. Cute. Anyway, somebody's playing Lady Gaga. Uh, <laughs> can't wait to why you guys can hear it. <laughs> yeah, Tesla cool, Gaga not cool. <laughs> Tesla. That, that's a, disc- awesome. that's a dis- discussion for another day. But Nikolai Tesla, Insane. scary guy. That guy, <laughs> scary cool bright guy, yeah. and scary guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, no, very cool. Really. If you've never read up about him, go read up about him. There's yeah. some. There's a couple of g- good uh, biographies and stuff. I can't remember off the top and of the my com- head now. And the competition between these inventors during that time was oh, incredible. Sh- him, him, and uh, Edison, and Westinghouse and Edison, and all these guys. It was cutthroat. Yeah. Electricity was cutthroat business. Yeah. And I, we, I watched a thing on Marconi. And the wireless, his first wireless transmissions across the Atlantic and things like that. And it was also cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah, and no, it was no. reputations that were being ruined. And ah, dude, it's like. Yeah. You actually read up into the history, you know, it's all these great men of science. And, really, and then you start reading actually the real lives and how it was done. And it's like, you know, like yeah, it's so bad now, <laughs> though, that you make mistakes and these, uh, all this competition. And it's, it's this person just made it before this person. And all this, uh, it, it actually makes you feel. Ah, and not, as, and not as it sort of if you look back you feel a bit dumb and look at all these great scientists then you read up, read up about their lives and you realize no we're actually quite normal yeah. most of them got successful when they were older than we are now no no Who's young 
Lots uh, of studies. Young. Normally, most of your sexes are done by the age of oh, scientists by 30. Okay. I thought they were older than Mathem- us when they got mathemat- successful. In mathematicians, their- if you're 30, yeah. that's it. You're over the hill. Really? You Except know, for the guy that very, did very the point K conjecture. Uh, oh, yeah, no, there, there's, except, there's exceptions to the rule, but the okay. vast majority of, of mathematicians do their yeah. greatest work so before they're 30. Okay. For, for, for Matt's last year, actually, okay. yeah. he was older. But uh, that's what I was saying. If the, yeah, the greatest work is done before it's 30. It's probably then a, a, a stage in your, in your life where you can't learn anymore. Oh. No, it's not so much that. It's got to do with a whole bunch of it's how the brain works, yeah. hormone profiles, social and pressures. Drives. We can't stop learning. Um, at a certain age, like at age thirty, your hormone profile starts to drop, so your drive to mm. succeed and compete decreases. Okay. So the probability that it will occur beyond that date is lower. Okay. Um, oh, so it's a whole bunch wow. of things going on. Right. Sweet. Uh, else, uh, put in the RC channel the uh, online lemmings game. I'm going to draw lines lemmings. on my screen uh, now. Sweet. And All else, right. you realize I'm going to have to go to the root of that site now and <laughs> see what you're saying. Just don't do it here. Yeah, okay. Well, let's do our picks so we can end so we can go and play Lemmings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, our pick for the week this week was thanks to Quinton's Twitter stream. Hello. <laughs> who who, who vo- nominated it? I did. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't get much response. Oh, didn't you? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and it's top tech fail or end that in the end did not actually change anything. Basically, it's, oh, it's this tech that had all this great promise and it's, it's going to change the world. Change the world and this is really going to yeah. find gaming or whatever. whatever. And then and it didn't then make it and nothing happened. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's start yeah. with the person. Quinton. All right. I remember the day Napster got shut down and everyone said, this is the end of freedom, the end of music, file sharing, blah, blah, blah. And here we are today, and Napster is a vague memory, and people are still sharing files freely, more freely than Napster did. Maybe they're doing it in a different way, but it's still torrenting. Peer-to-peer. Yeah, still peer to peer torrenting. It, and you know what's funny about that? The record labels are still just playing the same game as they did when they tried they're to shut down like, Napster. Yeah. Yes. And Napster paid $26 million in a settlement for all that music that they shared. It's better than what was that original one? That was something like twenty-seven or thirty trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's and, trillions, and it's yeah. facilitated. That, I mean, it's not even like they shared it. I, mm. I remember that that time. It was a golden time. There, there were these services where you literally could download songs. Not, not that you did from a central. Absolutely not. I thought this <laughs> is evil and needs to be shut down. Um, <laughs> but like a full-on database. The, the, yeah. This guys, these guys. It's a company. Their mission was to catalog all the music in the world. I could get South African music there, um, like like South African rock music, and like I could get histories of the bands. I could get the songs, and it's it's well documented, and, and the songs were good quality. And that mm. that just got pulled off the web. And you know what? It was replaced by nothing but crap. <laughs> yes. Okay. But we started to get back back to the... Yeah, but the, the... I mean, come on. Really? And uh, yeah, well, Let's not go down t- that road because we're just going to get angry. You know, yeah. one of the things is like I've been playing with Spotify, which we can't fish again in this country, but we've been playing with it. Awesome. It, that's the way you want to have music. Yeah. Is you pay a subscription and you have access to... Everything. Everything. It really is. It changes the way you listen to music. Also... Um, but you still, it still doesn't give you that same freedom. It's still not free. It's not f- as freedom as in you can take... You can can you download it? Uh, Spotify. You, you, you can buy it from them. So if I wanted, yeah, but Santa, I wanted to get us. I wanted to download that track. Yes. Can you actually download yes. it and put as MP3 format and you can go and if, s- if you pay for it. Okay, so you but you got to pay for how much yeah. is it? To uh, pay it, for? it follows the normal price. Ninety nine cents or something okay. like that. All right, um, cool. Look, I'm I'm not. You know, the guys who do this stuff do need, do need to get paid. So I'm not anti that. Oh no. no. Make it easy for the users though. Yeah, and this mm. does. Um, but then also with your subscription, you can listen to, you ne- you're never going to want to download it. Mm. No. I've actually considered getting subscri- subscriptions to, to open services or open services. Um, uh, th- I'm going to call them indie services is probably yeah. a, a, better a better way, way. to Magnitune and Gemendo. Um, Magnitune specifically, it's, it's exactly the same principle. Very cool. Um, you actually get a premium subscription, listen to whatever you want and download whatever you want. You may talk about these things though, so you need people with very broad... Um, catalog. Yes. So yeah. I also looked at Groove Shock. Groove yeah, Shock is yeah. pretty good, actually. It, it was missing some stuff. Was Spotify it? beats it. Okay. Like Interesting. Groove Groove Shock. Shock. So the only difference is Groove Shock works in South Africa. True, but they've just increased their pricing to the same amount as 
So if I okay, know. I oh, don't know. Interesting. I listened to the. I, I used the free version. Yeah, I checked out Groove Shark when they first launched, and it seemed to me that it was was going to be one of these services that got taken down because there was a whole bunch of like a, um, some pirate metal that I listened to called Oh yeah, I'll Storm. I tell you guys, yeah. yeah. Um, it was the actual pirated songs, like the the, the it's a, the fake stuff they uploaded to the, to, to their to uh, MySpace. Oh, no, 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 it's fake stuff that they put on the oh, torrent. torrents. On, okay. You know, they create a torrents for, yeah. for songs that in the middle of the song it says, Yar, piracy is a crime. You know, don't download music. Nice. Uh, from a pirate metal band that's rich. Um, and um, this was on Groove Shark. Yeah. So, you know yeah. where that comes from? Uh, Madonna wanted to partner with Napster because it, their music sells good. And one of her studio songs got released through Napster before she actually officially released it. So she uploaded a song. Which off the first minute says, "What are you doing?" This is, you know, so that's. No, yeah. they do lots of stuff like that. Okay, All right. Uh, Let's Stuart, your pick. Virtual reality. Yes. <laughs> do you guys remember <laughs> Lombo, man? Dude, what's I've it? Never the watched three it. F's, eh? Flying, falling, and beeping. <laughs> 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 Virtual reality. Did you ever try any of it? No, Did you no. ever actually put the goggles on and try? No. No. Dude, I get, I get a little bit seasick. Oh really? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. I get seasick on boats, but not in planes. It's I'm not motion sickness. It's actually like seasickness. That gave me seasickness. It's quite weird. But yeah, I, I, and I think it was probably because it was really blocky, and the video was a bit. It was still a bit laggy then, because I mean it was mm. it was like really early days of 3D graphics and stuff like that. So kind of when you moved your head around. The scene would lag a little bit behind oh. what you're actually seeing, sure. and you felt like that would drunk. make you seasick. That's what I'm saying. No, because your ear said you were looking there and your eye said oh, you're looking no, there. No, that hasn't quite moved yet. What the hell's going on? Yeah. And then the scene, you'd like, you'd be walking and the scene would move, but you wouldn't and it would confuse yeah. the crap. But mm. it was quite fun. It, they had it. Oh, I can't trials. remember where it was. It was some expo and then you had like a gun and you could, walk, you could aim and you had to shoot things and you walked Look, around and stuff. W- one day we're going to have glasses or whatever that you put on and they'll project into your... Straight retina. into your brain, dude. Yeah, I well, whatever it is. Thing. Anyway, virtual reality. Yeah, lots of promise. Fail. Epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> Yun. Um, I actually had a couple, but I'm I'm gonna stick with the theme of 3D and go with 3D movies. You remember? You remember back in the day that the, the passive. The, the passive three D movies, the, the the red and the red, what's it, yes. the red and blue, the red and blue stuff, yeah, and, and that didn't really take Stereo, off. Yeah, and now they, and now they want to, now they want to like ram more three D down up. Like oh, I'm, I'm so sick of three D. So yeah. you know, poly, you, polarized three D. Did and you see the auto stereoscopic three D? You know, you know, with the polarized three D, you know, it's a, it's a, a separate lenses that they add onto the projectors. Yes, I projectors. saw that thing. The DRM in that is so bad. That on Sony projectors, on Sony projectors, that the the the, the cinemas are leaving the polarizing project the lenses on, In and, the and oh, dropping yeah. the, the 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 brightness of the movie because if you remove the the lenses in the correct in the incorrect sequence, it locks your projector up and you can't use it. Seriously, that explains. I had a friend who went to go watch Pirates of the Caribbean on Tuesday, and he was saying it's just it was dark. Interesting. My it was very dark, and he complained to them, and they say or they said. Oh, you should have told us before you started watching the movie. And he's like, yeah, but I didn't know until you started watching, started the, movie. watching the movie. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's other. I, don't it's just, I wonder just what digital projectors we're using in South Africa. I certainly hope it's not Sony projectors. Look, I, I've never seen this like this. I just worry it, it could be just coincidence. I just know he mentioned it. But anyway, it's quite interesting. Yeah, uh, I did read apparently, about apparently that. the 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 problem comes in that Sony had um, have got older digital, you know, sort of punted these older digital projectors before 3D became mainstream, and so retroactively, in order to climb on the 3D bandwagon, they shipped these lenses um, that added the polarizing effect uh, for 3D stuff. And um, modern uh, projectors don't need that at all. They don't need an external lens. No. But so yeah. switch the 2D and it works properly. But the the the, the, big, the one issue was is the the DRM on the lenses. Yep. So 3D, 3D was a bad idea in the 90s in 3D movies. It's, it's a, a bad, bad idea, idea in the 50s. It <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a bad idea now. Just stop ramming it down. Ma- throats, ma- my play is I don't mind that some people like 3D, for it, but just pr- produce some of the movies. You know, on, on some of the like the blockbusters in non. 2D. You know, give me it one cinema I can go to. I'll go out of my way to go to a cinema to watch it in 2D. Yeah. There are a handful, but um, what's interesting is uh, I follow... Yeah, I follow be showing the latest week. You've got to wait three weeks, and you may as well wait three weeks to watch somewhere else. And um, there's, a, there's a guy in the States, um, I follow their YouTube channel, he invented 2D glasses. <laughs> Essentially what it is, it's 3D glasses 
with two of the same lenses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Apparently so works like a charm too. because he likes watching in 3D and his wife hates it with a passion. And so they built these 2D the glasses. The biggest cool. problem with that is you're still removing half the light. Yes. So Apparently, it's dark. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if, it, if it'll... Um, well, if you don't think, think about much, it, but that's... You're losing half the but data. Even, no, no, if it's 3D movie that is... But the problem is I found those 3D movies, yes, they are brighter. Well, they're supposed to be brighter because the polarizing filters are only letting half the light through. Yeah. But they are not, they're not nearly as bright as when you watch it normally. And it gets washed out, and the color's not so good. Yeah. And, I don't know, so apparently, um, from, from chatting to, to my uh, gaming colleagues, um, you know, 3D gaming is apparently fantastic. Watching it with, you know, a shutter, yeah. um, shutter glasses, apparently that's fantastic. And even NVIDIA's stuff that they, that they build to make games 3D, even though it's not always 100%, it works quite well. I've heard that that most be is the yeah. future of 3D. But Interesting. Keep it out of my movies. It, <laughs> suck, but it sucked then, it sucks now. Give I us like choice. It. Let <laughs> us vote with our money, and then we'll show you which one we're preferable. <laughs> anyway, talking about gaming, my, my, my pick is Duke Nukem 3D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. which, which, which apparently we are really, really going to get it. Yeah. The uh, ultimate Viperware. Pre, sure. Pre-orders, pre-orders. Are Did anybody here yeah. play the original? Yep. Uh, yep. I think we all know. Of course. Brilliant. Like no, Duke Nukem 1, <laughs> Duke Nukem 2, <laughs> Duke Nukem 3D. I was just... I'm not into gaming that much. Time to what's it? Yeah, kick but, ass but and chew bubble gum. If but you I'm were all out of gum. Computers at a certain age, just it was there. And everybody, Dude. I'm not uh, into shooters, but I played it. Yes, uh, no, I grew up with that. We used to, we modded it, <laughs> and we had that you had custom sounds, so you could put your custom sound packs. That you could play like an, uh, a sound sample uh, okay. uh, with a key with a keystroke, and then we had ta- like taunts. But you could put your own custom sounds in. Ah, oh, we had lots of fun with nice. that. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Good times. Over we'll, old serial cables and that. We'll see if it uh, really uh, does come through this time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling finally it might. How no, it is. It's it's ready. It's ready to be shown. It's not going to be open. Not going to buy it. It got picked up by a different. It got picked up by a different studio now. Again. Um, so this has been no, going. No, not again. This has been no, no, coming no, from ninety nine. Fourth. Or fifth studio has picked it up. No, 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 no. It's been with 3D Realms all this time. They they self funded it apparently. Um, it's not a 3D lot Realms it. that are doing it. No, but 3D Realms um, something 3D Realms went under. Yeah. Um, and um, and so I know it's the the guys who had the original IP, and I think uh, Vivendi had something to do with this, and so Vivendi actually sued them. Um, for some amount of money. Wasn't it John Romeo right in the beginning? N- no, no, no. Uh, uh, Romero. Romero. John no, no, Romero. No. Wasn't it him? No, no, no. Oh, no. He was involved. What was that other one that also was pretty vaporware? Um, John Daikatana. Romero was Daikatana. Daikatana. Yeah. John Romero <laughs> yeah. started with id Software with John Carmack. Yes, it was yeah. Romero and Carmack, uh, the fathers yeah. of the modern FPS. And uh, they, uh, yeah, and then they split off into their own thing. But yeah, no, it's... Um, it, but now, since the, the uh, I think 3D Realms went poof, it got picked up by another studio last year, and now they're finishing it off finally. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to say our goodbyes. I'm going to thank Jan from Eden for my broadband. Thank you. Quentin from uh, Geek, G33Q.co.z. Yes. Is. Stuart Allen, do you know if you want to punch your blog? We haven't done it in ages. He finished his lathe. I finished my lathe. He finished Stuart his Allen. lathe. org. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not just mechanical stuff. I do electronics projects and a bit of software there too. Cool. Go check it out. It's very cool. It's been nominated it's been on Hacker Day a couple of times. Yeah. So it's definitely worth it. A couple of my projects. Some hawk. Um, and also tune in to Let's Alti Afrikaans tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to tune in. Yep. Uh, definitely. It should be quite fun. Um, and thank you for listening. Yep. Cool, cool stuff. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Good night. <laughs>